Hello, and welcome to another quick little demonstration. This time it's for the proportions test. The proportions test is used when you are trying to compare the proportions of two independent populations. I need to repeat that because it is important. Proportions test can be used to test for equality or to estimate the differences in proportions between two independent populations. Steps are the same. Parametric test is the proportions test. It does have assumptions. It assumes that n times pi and n times 1 minus pi are greater than 5 in both groups. Do the violate, data violate the assumptions? It's just a matter of multiplying pi and n. And, and in this case, instead of pi, which is the population parameter, which you never know, you're going to use p, your hypothesized proportion, and then use the correct test. If it violates the assumption, there's no test to use. So here's the situation. Surprise, it's school zones again. But in this case, we're going to test the proportion of cars breaking the law in school zone A is greater than that in school zone B. So we're comparing two independent populations, the proportions for each of the two, the proportion of cars breaking the law in school zone A versus the proportion of cars breaking the law in school zone B. So the research hypothesis is pi A is greater than pi B. Again, we're using Greek letters because this is all about the population. And we're using the pi because it's the population p proportion. P for pi, P for proportion. Because there's no equals part in the research hypothesis, that's also the alternative. And the null will be the logical opposite of greater than, which is less than or equal to. So the parametric test is the proportions test. Assumes the data are binomially distributed in each group and that n pi is greater than 5 and n times 1 minus pi is greater than 5. Since we don't know pi, we're going to be using p. So let's go ahead and look at the data again. We're comparing school zone A with school zone B. And thankfully, not entirely sure how this happened, but everything is in order, uh, ascending order. So it's pretty easy to compare. It's a proportions test. We're comparing probability. Uh, we're comparing proportions of different populations, which means we're going to have to give it the number of successes and the number of trials for each population. Plus, we're going to have to specify the null hypothesis. I mean, the alternative hypothesis. Sorry. So the number of successes in zone A. Number of success is going faster than the speed limit. Number of successes is going to be 31 for A. The number of successes in B is 38. So let's hop over to R. Formula uh, function is prop.test. X again is going to hold the successes. I think I forgot them, but I think it's 31 in the first and 38 in the second. N again is going to hold the number of uh, trials. It's 40 in both. And the alternative, if we go back to our statement, the alternative is at A greater than B. Since A came first, the alternative is going to be greater. Control R. If we look, chi-squared is our test statistic. The p-value is 0.9743. Because p is greater than alpha, that means we cannot reject the null hypothesis, which means that the data supports the null hypothesis. And since the data supports the null hypothesis, that means the data supports the hypothesis that the proportion of those drivers in A breaking the law is less than or equal to the proportion of drivers in B breaking the law. We can get a 95% confidence interval in the same way that we have been going to copy and paste. Again, we don't need greater. I uh, don't need the alternative. Control R. We're 95% confident that the true difference in proportions of car drivers who violate the law is between 34.6% and 0.4%. So it's pretty close. Now again, note that when we're doing the confidence interval, we don't need any information about the alternative. 
when, because there really is no hypothesis for testing, so it doesn't make sense that we'd have to give it information about a null hypothesis. Uh, but if we're testing a null hypothesis, then we do actually have to specify what we want about the null hypothesis. By default, the alternative, uh, by default, it's p is equal to 0. The difference in the proportions is equal to 0. That is almost always what it's going to be. And by almost always, I mean almost always in real life. It's rare that you're going to have an, a null hypothesis of the form or a research hypothesis of the, of the form. The proportion of people breaking the law in school zone A is greater than the proportion in B plus 2%. It's usually greater than, less than, not equal to. And so that's the end. That's really what a prop test does. And so we're at the end. Hopefully this was helpful. It did seem short, but that's really all there is to it. Take care.